Remember I said earlier, safety divers are people that dive all day down to 35 meters. Well, you can't dive all day down to 35 meters every five minutes without getting DCI. So you need to know what you can do and what you can't do safely and what standard and what's okay. And then also know what standard dive times are. So if you have somebody who announced a, say a 75 meter free immersion dive, you'll know that that's not going to be, uh, it's gonna be more like 170 seconds rather than 140 seconds. Whereas a 75 meter weight dive would be probably about 220 or something like that. Know what the dive times are for, the, for each of the disciplines. Um, and uh, that, will, that will stand you in good stead. We'll cover some of that here. Um, some of the other stuff is in the competition course and other people, like I said, Ren Chap, but in the United States, there aren't a lot of people that know this stuff. Ren in North Carolina knows that he was, he has been Will Trubridge's chief of safety. Um, Martin Stepanek is also really good in this in Hawaii. And that's really about it in the US as far as I know. Um, so what do safety divers do at competitions? Um, the first thing they have to do when they get to a competition is they have to show that they actually know what they're doing. They have to demonstrate competence and they're evaluated by the judges. And so typically the organizers will, the organizer hires them on so they'll know them. But at big competitions like the World Championships, there's a full day spent with the judges evaluating safety divers and making sure that everyone's technique is the same. So um, one of the things you do when you first get there is you go through an evaluation. The organizer may do a training day and you'll have a separate evaluation with the judges. Um, the other thing you'll be doing is getting uh, experience with the divers at the comp by safety and training sessions, preferably for a week or even two weeks before the event. And some, uh, some organizers, uh, like the Kalamata, for example, they will have safety divers there for two weeks or more before the event, safety everybody. And what that does is it gives the safety divers a sense of what everybody's doing. They'll know that diver A is doing only constant weight and he's slow. They'll know that diver B is doing all three disciplines and they happen to be really fast in constant weight and really slow on no fins and that they come up really shaky on free immersion dives for some reason. So by the time the comp comes around, they know what to look for with the divers. And I can assure you the organizer and the judges are noting this stuff and the safety divers that know to do this are really valuable. So you want to be there in the week or two before the comp, even if you're not, if you're being paid for the week of the comp as a safety diver, get there early and be safetying the divers during that week or two before so you know what they're doing and you know what to expect. During the comp, um, you help the organizers set up every day's activities. You'll do everything from measuring and marking the ropes, which have to be done with the judges when they get there, um, to setting up each day's, uh, getting the platform set up or boost, whatever you're using. Um, if it's a pool event, you have to be taping the pool and untaping the pool every day, unless the pool is kind enough to leave everything up at night, which is nice. Um, so setting up for each day is important. And during, on competition days, you'll have to have safeties both on competition areas and also in the warm-up areas, and if there's a significant distance in between, like there are at some competitions, there'll either have to be boats to take them back and forth or safety divers to shovel people back and forth to keep them safe. So basically, whenever somebody's in the water, there should be safety divers watching them. Why is that? Well, they could have an accident or B, people do some really dumb things. And if nobody's watching them, people will find anything to go down and do a hang on when they're, when they're not being watched and shouldn't be. So safety divers are basically in, char in charge of making sure they know everybody that's in the water at the event, everything that's happening and watching out to make sure that nobody's doing something that they uh, shouldn't be. Um, now in pools, if any of you have been, have any of you been to a 50 meter a pool with a 50 meter, uh, a competition in pool, the 50 meter pool and see how they do it. Um, they, 50 meter pools are tricky to safety for, for um, dynamic because the diver underwater with a monofin is gonna be moving much faster than a diver on the surface with bifins can move without getting winded. So they split the pool up so that in a, so typical uh, lane, a typical lane in a 50 meter pool for, con for dynamic would be two safety divers. Um, if there is a 25 meter pool or 25 yard pool, you can have one safety diver covering the whole thing. Um, in competition lines for depth events, uh, you'll usually have divers rotating. So say vertical blue or there's one competition line, there will typically be one or two safety divers on the warm-up lines, the warm-up area, and there will be a team of three 
on the main line. And what they do is they rotate first safety, second safety, and third safety. First safety is going down deep, meeting around 35 meters. Second safety is meeting around 20 to 25. And the third safety is generally either going to be staying at the surface and resting up after the, because they were diving, they were the deep diver previously. They're staying at the surface and they go down in case of emergency. So knowing how those uh, divers function is a useful thing. If you want to see how this works in practice, you can go to some, some of the um, Ada World Championships uh, are online. The, um, the 2017 was in Nice. That was a bit of a fiasco. Some of them worked out okay, some didn't. Um, don't, I would say, focus on the Ada ones, not the CMAS ones, because the C CMAS has had issues. They don't have the experience with depth, and they haven't had the... Um, they, they don't have the, the kind of the strength and depth that Ada has in the safety divers. So if you can find some Ada comps, like the 2017 is particularly cool. You can look up uh, Dave Mullins and Alexei Molchnov did the, the gold medal dives in constant weight. And you can see how the safety divers are coming down. There's one that meets them about 35 meters. The second one meets them 20 to, five, 20 to 5, 25 meters. And you see your third one coming down about five to 10 and they come up in a team. And it's kind of cool to watch that. And that's actually how they do it at, the, at most of the events if it's a sophisticated team. It's well choreographed. Um, so that's a little bit about event safety. I've thrown a lot at you in five or six minutes here. Um, any questions on that? A uh, question back? Okay, can you tell David and he can type it? Okay, let's see. Who oversees free dive safety for film productions? <laughs> Avatar 2. Um, that's an easy one. Kirk Crack is the head of safety for that. Um, Kirk is the guy I started teaching with a long time ago. Um, he's very experienced. He was a tech diver uh, years and years and years ago in Cayman. He got into free diving early, um, early, I mean, about 20, 20 plus years ago. And uh, I don't know, I, I haven't spoken to him about this specifically, how he got into Avatar, but he did Avatar 1 and um, over a period of a couple of years, they're now filming Avatar 2, 3, uh, let's know, he did Avatar 2, and they're now filming 3, 4, and 5 at the same time, I think, um, or something down that line. Anyways, there's five, there'll be five Avatar films coming out shortly for your viewing pleasure. So Kirk was the guy running safety for that. There were a lot of free divers involved. Liz Parkinson from the Bahamas was there as a stunt double, I believe. And I don't know who, who else was there, but I know they had a bit of a team. And they, I think, were looking for people on short notice because I think there were people that ended up uh, either quarantined or with COVID when they got off the plane or something. So, uh, but there should be some very cool free diving shots in that. Did that answer your question? Okay, question is, what can safety divers do to be part of teams and practice safety outside of comps? That's a good question. That gets back to the point where I was making, you know, what can you do be, when you're not at comps? And right now, with the pandemic, there are very few, if any, competitions. There were a couple last fall. I don't know if anything going on this spring. Um, the, the main thing you can do is, whatever you're doing locally, run it as professionally as you can. If you're teaching, if you're um, just training, um, think of it as, as serious safety and try to get it orchestrated like that. Um, that's really right now about all you can do. And then um, I don't know, in, in the US, the only comps that are actually here are the two. There's one in Miami um, that will not happen this year. And there's one in Tampa that will be March 7 to 9. If you want to go to, and Wani is actually the organizer. I think he's on this call. So you can get in touch with him. If you wanted to volunteer for that, he would be the person to talk to. Um, but uh, to practice, you just, you, you want to be practicing with, you can do it 
say if you've got a three person team and you've got time, you could practice with two buddies or two safeties for the person diving. It'll extend your diving, uh, your the time between dives, but you could definitely do that. Was that helpful? Okay, great. Um, let me move on to um, ADA competition rules. Um, this is gonna be a short summary of the general rules, not the discipline specific rules. Um, those get into a lot of detail, um, but I'm gonna give you a sense, how many, raise your hand, how many of you have seen the ADA competition rules before? One, okay, not the most exciting reading, um, but they are, they are very important for competitions. Um, now I'm gonna talk about the ADA rules, not the CMAS rules. I know a lot about the ADA rules. I don't know a lot about the CMAS rules, although I, I do know that they're fairly close. The surface protocol and some other things are different, but in general, most of what you would do at an ADA comp is what you would do at a CMAS comp. And there are athletes, especially in Italy and a few other countries that go back and forth between them. So I will be talking about ADA, but if you went to a CMAS competition, say in Italy, um, you'd want to see their rules, but it wouldn't be radically different from this. The rules I'm going to be covering today are the ADA, uh, version 17. It's the 2020 version of the ADA competition rules. Um, so you want to make sure you've got that. Though, If you do want to look these over, and I would highly recommend that if you're interested in getting into safety or going to a comp, you can go on the adainternational.org website and download these. Um, just rummage your way around the website. They have in the document section, I think. Um, they will have the competition rules and they have the current 2020 version uh, there. So you can download those. It's about 20 pages or so. They are complicated, um, uh, complicated enough that people who have written them are often perplexed by what they mean. Uh, people who have judged them for years are often perplexed what they mean. So if, you, if they're somewhat confusing, uh, you're, joining a, you're joining a crowd on that basically. So let's go over a bit of what you um, will see in the rules. The structure of the rules is basically one through three are miscellaneous stuff, definitions and a few other things. Section four is really important. It's the general rules that apply to all competitions. There's some really important stuff in there, like who, what qualifications you have to have to be an athlete, what kind of general safety equipment you need. Um, specific safety uh, rules are generally in section five. And that's actually a section I wrote in 2014. That was after there was a, a we lost a diver at Vertical Blue in 2013. There was in 2014, there was a section added on safety. And section five is the current version of that section that was added in 2014. Um, I won't go into great deal of depth on that now. A lot of it's very technical. Um, and some of it is, relates to medical practices and things like that, which Wani is very familiar with uh, as an event doctor and most other people don't need to know that much about. Um, section six through eight are the competition discipline section. Section six is static. Section seven is dynamic, dynamic no fins, including bifins. And section eight is depth disciplines all bundled together, which is constant, uh, constant bifins, free immersion and constant no fins. Um, Section nine is um, variable weight, which I'm not going to cover here at all because it's not done in competitions. Um, section 10 is penalties. If you go to a comp, this one you need to know because you need to know if what you're doing or might be about to do is a penalty, which is a point deduction, or if it's a DSQ. That's really important. Getting five points taken off is not a big deal unless you're going for a national record. Um, getting DSQ'd is a big deal regardless of whatever you're trying to do. Section 11 is the protest procedures. Um, that's important in competitions if you are trying for a national record or something, or if you're at a team world's competition where you are, your position relative to other divers is really important. As a beginning diver at competition, you're not gonna do a lot of those because it just doesn't matter. Um, but you will wanna be familiar with it. If you're safetying, it's good to know what's going on there because the protests can come up after the, immediately after the diver surfaces. And if you know what they're doing and don't have to look around like you're, you know, they're on the planet or something like that, that will be very useful to an organizer if you're a safety diver. Um, so let me run through a few of these rules um, for you. Again, these are all general rules. Um, before I start in, uh, one thing I want to say, and I'm going to give this kind of a general plug is, um, how many of you raise your hand have Dan Dive medical insurance? Nobody? 
Dan Dive Medical Insurance. Okay, um, can you hear me? Can you raise your hand if you can hear me? Okay, very good. That's how many hands I should see with the Dan Dive Medical Insurance. Um, it is super valuable to dive in competitions and to do a lot of things today. You, need, you, you can't even go to events without having it. Um, if you travel and are outside the country, your own insurance likely won't work. Um, Dan Dive Medical Insurance is super useful. Um, I know of a number, I know a lot of people that have used it for things that were very expensive. Dan doesn't even ask questions. Um, so I would highly recommend you do this. How many of you are instructors already? Raise your hand. Okay, the person in the hand at the back there. The other cool thing about uh, having Dan Dive Medical Insurance is if you're an instructor, it allows you to insure your level one divers, your, your students for free which is really cool. Um, that means you have them insured uh, for medical stuff, which means the most likely source of lawsuits is taken away, which is great. So David um, heard my spiel about Dan, Dan Dive Medical. David, if you can repeat my spiel to them afterwards in person, that would be great. It's super useful. If you travel, don't go anywhere without having this. Um, it, it can be, you can be left in a bad position if you don't have insurance. Um, as in needing an evac plane and not being able to get it, needing a chamber treatment, not being able to get it, et cetera. So it's $100 a year. And if you're traveling outside the country, um, a very good idea to have. So getting that was my uh, two minute spiel for Dan Dive Insurance. I don't have stock in Dan or anything. Um, getting back to the rules, let's go through a few general ones. Uh, yeah. To the, uh, let's see. Can, can you ch type it in the chat? Oops, uh, the diver mentioned the dive. Uh, yes, that was that, that was the uh, Nick Mevely in one breath. Exactly. Yes. Um, we got eight minutes of Zoom. Okay, there is a forty minute limit on Zoom. You're right. Okay, let me go. It was that was one breath. Let me go very quickly through the the rules here. Um, Official time for all competitions is universal time. Um, you can't safety an event at which you compete. You can't be a medic at event at which you compete. Um, ADA has anti-doping rules. Um, if you are going to compete, you should read those. And you can't breathe oxygen um, within uh, 60 minutes prior to performance or anything other than just ambient air. Athlete requirements, you have to be 18 years old or 16 with parental consent. Um, you have to be a member of an ADA national, not necessarily your own country. You have to have a medical certificate. This is important, not older than one year, saying no contradiction, a, contraindic a contraindication to free diving. Most people use the ADA student medical form for that, but you can use any doctor's note that says no contraindication to free diving. You have to have a valid passport. And you have to have the ADA comp form. I gave David a copy of this. This is new. This all this came out of the ADA rules from 2014, also. But this is it's now a part of the actual rules. If we had more time, I'd go into depth on this. But David can distribute that. Um, you have to complete this before the event. It basically keeps you from doing dives a lot deeper at the comp that you've done recently, which is a very good idea, regardless. And if any, you have to report any medicines you're taking to the jury, even if they're um, not on the banned list. So if you're, if you're at the competition and you've got allergies, tell them you're taking antihistamines. Um, if you've got anything that might be on the banned list, tell them you can have a, a, a therapeutic use exemption if you have a doctor's reason for having it. If it's just steroids, they probably won't give it to you. Um, timing, this is important. You have to report to the competition area at least 60 minutes prior to the official top. And the reason for that is you're not allowed to breathe that oxygen or anything else out of the tank for 60 minutes prior to your talk. This is how they guarantee that. You're allowed in the warm-up area not earlier than 45 minutes before your start. Um, people get disqualified for this, even very experienced divers. I've seen uh, former world record holders get DSQ'd on this one. So don't get in the water before 45 minutes before your start. And you can't get into the comp area until the organizer, typically the judge, uh, tells you that you're allowed in the comp area. You should have three minutes in the comp zone. Um, in a good comp, you'll have closer to five. If things are not going well, you might have down to about two, but you should have at least three. Um, heart rate monitors are not allowed if you have a watch that has a wrist monitor on it. If it's over your wetsuit, it does, it's okay because they can't read through a wetsuit. So just wear it on the outside of your um, wetsuit. 
Um, the touching rule, I'm not gonna, even going to get into because it's the most complicated rule in free diving. But don't. Uh, the summary is: don't let anyone touch you after you've surfaced, or touch anyone until you the judge gives you your card. If you do, you are very likely to get disqualified. Um, the start. Uh, this is going to be. We're not going to be able to fit this into five minutes. You basically have um, a two-minute mandatory countdown from the judge for both depth and pool disciplines. For pool disciplines, you have 10 seconds to start um, and uh, without a penalty, and then from 10 to 30 uh, with a penalty and after 30 DSQ. In depth, you have 30 seconds to start after 30 DSQ. The surface protocol I will save for the comp course. It is the second most complicated rule in freediving and the most protested thing. You need to know how that works uh, if you're going to do a comp. Um, it plays in with the airway dip rule, which is also really important. Um, you can have a comp, uh, a coach in, in the zone, comp zone with you, which is very useful to help you start before the start and with the surface protocol afterwards. Um, equipments, lanyards, this is important. Um, Lanyards can be 30 to 120 centimeters long. They can't be made out of fishing line. Uh, wire is great. Uh, plastic covering over rope is okay. Um, they can attach to the wrist, ankle, or waist, depending on which discipline you're doing. And they have to have a quick release, which is either Velcro or a sailing snap shackle. What should you do if you're not sure how to make one of these things, because they're hard to make? Buy one from Octopus. David knows where to get those. And that's, uh, they're high, very high quality um, and uh, that you want to you wanna have. Um, limitation of announcements. This is new, uh, section 5.2.1 of the rules. It's new, it's in a new form. That's that comp form that David's printed out and given you. You have to fill this out before the event, but this came out of the Nick Mevely issue and an issue at the 2011 World Championships and was a way to try to limit divers from dramatically jumping down depths at competitions. So the current version, I'll make sure I cover this in the comp course if I, when I do it, um, but it is important because it will limit what you can do at the comp compared to um, uh, what you've done beforehand. Um, the rest of the stuff about how start lists and uh, announcements and preliminary results and protests and final results work, I will save um, also because that will be a little bit time consuming. Let me give you some locations for training and for comps. And then if you have more questions on this, give them to David and I can give you something in writing on this. Um, places to train, Kalamata, Greece, one of my personal favorites. It's a cool town, good food, um, world-class setup um, and organizer and safety divers. Sean El Sheikh, uh, Andrea Zakari, Freediving World at Sean Club, uh, similar great conditions. These places both have 150 meters of water, very close to shore. Um, Dahab, cool place, um, very likely to get sick if you go there, but it's otherwise it, diving in the blue hole, it's beautiful. Sardinia, if you want to go to Italy, Apni Academy has a uh, branch in Sardinia. Uh, in Nice uh, has SIPA. Um, the good thing is for 40 euros, you get a whole year of diving. The bad news is it's tricky and political. And if you don't speak French, you're not going to have much of a chance there. Um, Indonesia, in Gili, there are two world-class operators. Um, if you're wanting to go there, let me know. I'll give you their names. They're both really solid. Uh, Bonaire, Carlos Cost, um, one of the world's top divers. Okinawa, Ryuso from Japan, a uh, great guy. Uh, Croatia, a couple people are running training camps there, Goran Kolac and some others. And there are training camps that go on in Kona. I don't know who runs them though. Um, competitions, I think I've got two minutes. Um, there are pool competitions, putting aside coronavirus pandemic. In the EU, there are world-class pool competitions every weekend from October through April. So if you wanna do a pool comp, um, that's the place to go. Uh, Ricardo Perez has one in Miami, Juani's doing one in Tampa, um, and depth competitions, uh, Kalamata Greece for the Med Cup, Sean El Sheikh, the Red Cup, uh, Roatan Caribbean Cup, Red Sea Triple Depth, Bonaire, Carlos Cost has an event, uh, Walid has an event in Curaçao, which is also well run, and Alejandro Limas runs one in the Cenotes. Um, Vertical Blue is the, is um, if you're in the top 10, the ranking list is a, a, a wonderful event. I've done five of them, but it is a tricky event. You don't want to go there for your first or second or third comp. It's, it's a, um, you, you'll, it just, it's easy to get it over your head there. So um, if you want more information, ask David. Also, you can just go onto the Ada website, check the Ada comp calendar. There may not be much now because of the pandemic, but normally they have quite a bit. I'm being told I have less than a minute. So um, if you have questions, give them to David. He can send them to